Mr. Pavna Doshi, President of the Indian Merchants Chamber, Mr. Niranjan Hiranandani, President elect, Mr. Neeraj Bajaj, Chairman of the Ramkrishna Bajaj National Quality Award Trust, Mr. Shailesh Vedya, Vice President elect, Mr. Lula, Mr. Prasad, distinguished awardees, especially our wonderful Yogacharya BKS Iyengar. Ladies and gentlemen, I hope that covers everybody. <laughs> it gives me great pleasure to be here with you this evening. Oops, I shouldn't have said that. I shouldn't have said that because one of the hallmarks of quality in public speaking is supposed to be never begin a speech with the words, it gives me great pleasure. Everyone does it, so you have to avoid that. It is said that there was a, a public speaking uh, training being done in one of the top management institutions in the UK in which this um, professor would actually draw up a list of such rules beginning with the rule, never begin a speech or a presentation with the words, it gives me great pleasure. And then he would train the managers in delivering a quality presentation while following these rules. And one of the techniques he used was to put topics in a hat. And then they would draw a topic and they would have to make a presentation impromptu while following all of these rules accurately, including, of course, the rule, never begin a speech with the words, it gives me great pleasure. Well, the story goes that one occasion he put all these topics in a hat and uh, the smartest manager in the room drew out a topic and the topic was quality. So the gentleman said, it gives me great pleasure and he sat down again. <laughs> so there are ways in which you can address these issues of quality but I must add they should have had one more rule, never try and address an audience that has been so thoroughly charmed by BKS Iyengar. It's impossible to follow. <laughs> but it really does give me great pleasure to see quality being recognized by an Indian institution. And I would like to commend the Indian Merchants Chamber on the work that the IMCRBNQA, does anybody place Crabble? It would be really quite a comment. <laughs> IMCRBNQA Trust is doing in terms of reaching out to more and more Indian organizations and helping them adopt a performance excellence model in their work. Given that the late Sri Ramakrishna Bajaj's motto was, as we've heard, trust in quality and business ethics, and that he pioneered the quality movement in our country, it's fitting that this award named after him is not just a prize, but a process, one in which all applicant organizations, whether they win an award or not, receive a detailed feedback report, beneficial to map the quality journey of the organization and of course to help them bring improvements in their performance. The quality may be common or uncommon to Indian industry, you know better than me. But for me the first challenge when I was asked to address this topic this evening was that quality is virtually impossible to define. It is said that quality is something whose presence is never acknowledged but whose absence is always noted. But then quality is rather like India. Anything I can tell you about it, the opposite is also true. So it's equally true that in our country, the quality is often noticed and its absence is generally ignored. <laughs> Some speak of quality. <laughs> Some speak of quality as a feeling rather than a measurable construct. Thus an airline can advertise this quality not by indicators, measurable indicators, like the punctuality of its flights, the taste of its food, or the pitch between its seats, but by a slogan that says, we love to fly and it shows. <laughs> There's quality. The ultimate conclusion then is that quality is not easily amenable to definition, but rather like pornography, you know it when you see it. And yet the idea of quality relates to something that is quite fundamental to humanity. The idea of quality emerges from a basic human desire to excel. Now, quality is not merely for a small elite who have the talent and the resources to excel. It inheres in all of us. It is a core aspect of humanity. No matter how rich or poor you are, everyone at some time or the other in their life experiences this aspiration for quality. You can appreciate quality when you're watching a well-played cricket match, or eating good food, or observing an excellent painting. This is why we've recognized quality today in such a wide variety of fields, honoring quality in zinc, in insulation, in petroleum, banking, and education, 
as well as, of course, in yoga. As I'm sure we've all realized today, quality is inspirational and motivational. It makes you a winner, and it makes you appreciate winners. It implies a level of consciousness that comes from working for a higher goal and not just for a petty purpose. This is important for any individual, but also for any country or corporation. Quality, in my view, actually is not just excellence. It, it must emerge from the pursuit of excellence for a larger purpose than its own self. To attain true quality, we must set goals that go beyond our immediate needs. That is why in this, these brief remarks, I will not restrict myself to the kind of quality that you have examined and awarded today. I'm not a management expert. So let me ask, what kind of quality will bring out the best in all of us as a country and aid in the resurgence of India? As the well-known management and, and quality guru, Philip Crosby, said, and I quote, quality is the result of a carefully constructed cultural environment. It has to be the fabric of the organization, not part of the fabric. Now this certainly applies to the legend amongst us, the Yogacharya, Sri B.K.S. Iyengar. But it also applies to our country as well. Quality has to be woven into the overall fabric of the Indian nation. Now that may seem to you a statement of the obvious, so beyond it, in what ways can quality be pursued in the context of tomorrow's visible realities? To my mind, in the quest for quality, there are three aspects that are worth thinking about today, and this is not an exhaustive list, there can be many others, but three that I've dropped before you, which in my view can help in the resurgence of quality in India and bring us into the next decade with confidence. The first is sustainability. I was so delighted when Ms. Bhavna Doshi presented me with a certificate of a garden of a hundred trees planted in my honor. I'm truly honored because we need to emphasize quality in the pursuit of the noble cause of preserving the earth. Every human being should want this since none of us is exempt from vulnerability to the vagaries of the environment. Every person can identify and relate to both the destructive and the necessary reviving forces around us in our environment. We hear of idealistic school children and concerned adults, government bureaucrats and NGO workers, technologists and economists, and of course the media, looking at the challenge of the environment with mounting vigor and passion. The discussions of global environmental challenges, whether in Copenhagen or Kolkata, in Durban or Delhi, have engaged already large and influential sectors of opinion in our country. Part of the challenge for India's leadership on this issue is the art of simultaneously raising public consciousness and steering the tenor of the debate beyond the sterile dogmas of received positions. The conventional wisdom may have the merit of being right, but it is by definition rarely original and cannot cast light on new ways forward out of old dilemmas. There's therefore a great need to think afresh, to come up with innovative approaches and to educate media, civil society and politicians on what exactly is at stake and why we need to produce new ideas.